How much money did I make in 2023? My first full calendar year as a full-time influencer, content creator, slash person who posts things on the internet for strangers to consume and enjoy. When I first started this thing eight years ago, I remember thinking, how cool would it be if I could just make enough to cover the costs of all of these products I'm reviewing. I never expected to pay my bills with this thing, to cover my rent, to be able to quit my day job and just a year after doing so, make $100,000. Should I have bleeped that out to add to the suspense and make you watch this whole video? <laughs> dollars. Seriously though, stick around because in addition to covering some of the FAQs I get whenever I get transparent about money, I'm going to break down my income by revenue stream because a new one popped up for me this year. And though I think it technically still counts towards self-employment income, I know that there will be people arguing in the comments saying that I should not be counting it. And then we're going to look at how this income was distributed month to month because though this can definitely be a lucrative business, it is not the most consistent. Though this year was far more consistent than my last. Flashbacks to April 2022. But first a quick hi and welcome if you're new here and welcome back if you're not. My name is Kaya Marriott and I am a hair, beauty, lifestyle creator who makes most of her content and her living under the handle Comfy Girl Curls. This little corner of the internet, Creating with Kaya, is where I share all of the tips and resources for those who want to learn how to approach content creation as a sustainable business. I've been sharing my annual income recaps for the past three years and though it's always like a little bit of an uncomfortable process, I do it because I think it's so important to be transparent in this space. The creator economy is still so new, it's completely unregulated, and when no one wants to talk money, nobody knows if they are getting taken advantage of, they don't know their full potential. And just like in any other industry, not talking about money just widens the gender wage gap and the racial one. I also hope that in sharing how much I've been able to make as a creator, a relatively small one at that, that it gives somebody else the sense that they can do this too. With the only caveat being that it's a long game, not a get rich quick scheme. Okay, so it has been my goal to hit six figures for the past two years. And literally two hours ago, I received a direct deposit notification that pushed us into the six figure club. The happy dance I did. I have made a total of $100,335. What? With 2,900 still on the streets, meaning I have sent the invoices out and I'm just waiting for the, the money to come in. Which brings us to $103,235. This is of course gross income prior to taxes and expenses, which I will be calculating in the new year. I usually have to set aside about 30% for taxes and on the expenses front, I don't think I went too crazy this year. I didn't buy myself any new camera gear. So we're looking more at like hosting fees, software subscriptions, all of that. Let me know if you wanna see a video on my expenses after I've done all the math. And I just wanna highlight this because I think it's really funny that whenever I talk about money online, people are in the comments talking about revenue versus profit, talking about taxes, always in this sort of gotcha type of way. But while I do think it really is important to talk about expenses and, you know, like the full breakdown of where all of the money is going, when people discuss their salaries at a traditional job, they're not giving you this whole breakdown after taxes and deductions. But then again, I get it because on the opposite side, there are a lot of people on social media who use their income as a tool to sell to other people. Like they'll say, buy my $5,000 course and you too can make a million dollars like me. And they've spent like $700,000 on Facebook ads to be able to get people to like buy their course. And so like that transparency is really important, but I digress. <laughs> so now for a revenue stream breakdown, because my most asked questions are always how and where did that money come from? The biggest chunk of my income as it has been every year to date is from brand deals. This is when a brand pays me to create content that highlights or features or includes their product or service. And then this content gets posted on my social media platforms and blogs. I have dabbled in UGC, user-generated content this year, where you partner with the brand to create content and that content only lives on the brand's page. You don't have to do any posting. But these were still posted on the other brand's accounts as me, either Creating with Kea or Comfy Girl Curls. So I don't know if that fully counts as like UGC or not. 
So based on what I have in my bank account and what I am still waiting for, like what I've invoiced for, my total is $81,697. And the brand partnerships were broken down into 43 unique campaigns. The lowest I was paid for a campaign was $450. The most I was paid was eight grand. <laughs> I worked with 24 different brands. 11 brands were completely new to me this year, meaning I had never worked with them before. And 13 were ones that I had worked with previously. So they had either renewed a long-term partnership or I had just worked with them as a one-off in previous years and they reached back out again this year. For those wanting to start getting brand deals or learn how to make more from their brand deals, I have so much content on this channel on the topic. How to attract brands, how to get on their radar, how to negotiate contracts better, how to start getting long-term partnerships, i.e. making a brand wanna work with you again and again and again. I definitely recommend you like binge watch it with a notepad if it's something that you're interested in. Next up, I have a very small amount for ad revenue and affiliate income, which is generated from both my blogs, Comfy Girl Curls, and more recently, Creating with Kea. There I made $12.50, which is not bad because it does offset the cost of running a blog, hosting the blog, my domain fees and all of that. I do know I could do better. Though I did ramp up content on creatingwithkea.com this year, I just did not do as much as I could have and I didn't really push a lot of affiliate links. So we'll see how next year goes. Then when it comes to my own products and services that I offer, I made $1,488. So I've been selling Pinterest starter guides, which I kind of started maybe offering for free. I started offering paid audits for people where I would look at their profile and you know, tell them some things that they could change to improve it and better optimize their page. And I also started offering one-on-one -on -one consultation calls. Next year, I do want to level up with like digital products and just expand that piece of the pie a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna lean too hard into one-on-one -on -one calls and consultations. I absolutely love doing them. I've had a lot of great feedback from them, but I find with all of the other things I wanna do with my business, it's just, not super worth the time. Then I grouped a bunch of things under other, which made me $6,500. This is anything that just truly didn't really fall into a traditional brand deal type of thing. I wasn't selling products. It was just me using my content creation skills or my brand presence to do something and get paid for it. A lot of this category is made up of speaking opportunities. I have had quite a number this year. I will say the majority of the opportunities I have to speak on my experience as a content creator are not paid. They're just like great exposure, great opportunities to connect with my community. But I did have a couple that paid really well or had given me like a small honorarium. And then I also did a handful of projects that involved me using like my camera, my editing skills to complete projects for other people that were not for like social media or my business. Then finally, if anyone's been doing, you know, quick maths, there is a pretty big chunk remaining. And this is where I think people are gonna fight me. So in previous videos, I've talked about the importance of diversifying your income as a self-employed person to sort of like bolster up your revenue and like not put all of your eggs in one basket. So a new revenue stream opened up to me this year that was not on my diversification bingo card. At the end of 2022, I received a DM from a commercial agent who had seen my content on Instagram and liked my vibe and energy and invited me to do coffee. I said yes, one thing led to another. She asked if I ever thought about commercials, said it would be a really natural extension of what I was doing already. I said, sure, signed with her, and I somehow managed to book for commercials this year. I've not been paid for all of them, but what I have been paid for contributed $12,245 to my overall income. I know some people are gonna be like, hey, you didn't make six figures as a content creator this year. You didn't make six figures as an influencer this year. But I'm like, please just let me have this. I've been trying to hit the number for so long. And I mean, I wouldn't be doing commercials if I wasn't creating content on the internet. Like one thing led to another. I don't know, what do you think? But yeah, seriously, that's been a really cool experience this year. I think I will talk about it a little bit more in my like year wrap up reflections video. It did definitely pull focus from a lot of things this year because the TV commercial world is so 
sudden. You're told very last minute if you get a call back, then very last minute if you book it, and then now your whole week's taken up by this. And there's a lot of times that I dropped the ball on brand deals because of it. I definitely missed YouTube uploads because of it. And so I do think it does kind of balance out a bit where this awesome, really incredible opportunity came up. It helped me to diversify, but it did in some ways, I think, pull focus from income in other areas, if that makes sense. If we don't count the commercials, I made $90,000 this year. So I know, what do you think? Now for a quick breakdown of my monthly revenue. As you can see, it's definitely not consistent month to month. My lowest month being March, $4,261, and my biggest month being July, $18,404. I do think this year was a lot more consistent before I was dropping like below $1,000 some months, not even enough to pay rent and then some months down the line hitting five figures. This is starting to get a little bit more stable. So yeah, that was my first year of earnings as a full-time content creator. Like it's just, it's not lost on me how much of a privilege it is to be able to make money from creating content on the internet, to be able to be self-employed and do this very creative job. And I just really do hope that if you are here watching this video, you've made it to the end that this video doesn't make you feel like a sense of comparison or a sense of like not doing enough, being enough, having enough. That is again, not what this is meant to be. And I'm very aware of the fact that the economy is rough right now. Money is an extremely sensitive topic, more so than it's been in a long time. Yeah, I just hope that if you are somebody who wants to take content creating seriously, that this channel offers you value and the tips and tools and resources to be able to pursue it for yourself. If you were just watching this because you're nosy and you have no intention or desire to be a creator, I just hope that whatever Whatever it is that you are doing that you find success in it, joy in it, I just wish you all the best. For those looking to binge watch all of that how to be a creator content, I do have a playlist linked for you here. Thanks for watching and until next time.